it's high time we took a break and told you a bit more about OctaFX, the best Forex broker Asia 2021 with more than 10 years of experience. OctaFX helps traders build stronger futures by offering a wide variety of educational videos and unlimited demo training accounts. Don't have enough time to learn how to trade or build your trading strategy? Take advantage of the OctaFX copy trading app. All you have to do is choose the master traders, copy their trades with just one tap and withdraw your profit quickly. Control your portfolio and investments on the go with the OctaFX copy trading app. Manage your risks with a risk score, a brand new feature that shows how risky each master trader's strategy is. Copy the preferable investment strategy based on the level of risk the investor is taking. Check the caption to learn more. Find your bonus for OctaFX copy trading app in the description. It's time to take your seat at the table. Find out how with Vosi Tembeguayo as we discuss ideas that matter. A catalyst for bold action. Hey Vosi, my name is Zakia. I'm an entrepreneur from Durban, South Africa. Thank you for your time and thank you for the honesty and realism. Um, today's topic, as always, is super relatable and relevant. But um, your fun American accent... <laughs> Your mad black woman accent was, <laughs> it was hilarious and unfortunately so on point. Like I wanted to be mad. I wanted to disagree, but I couldn't. Right up until just like my daddy. <laughs> so thank you for the lessons. Thank you for the blind spot check. And I, I hope that we see you in the Club 100. Well, I hope I see you in the Club 100. Hello, family, and welcome to another episode of the VT Podcast, where we talk about ideas that matter. Akia, thank you so much for um, that testimonial. What a beautiful name, Akia. Beautiful, beautiful name. Um, I'd love to know what it means, actually. Um, I feel like it's one of those names that must have real depth and meaning behind it. I'd also love to know what was happening in mom and dad's life when they decided to name you such a beautiful name, Akia. Lovely. So yeah, I told you guys, like, accents is my thing. You know, I'm, I, I am I am the man I think I am when it comes to these accents. And, um, it's a, you know, it's in, in public speaking, it's, it's really been a skill over the years that has... Um, that has stood me in, in good stead. I've done I've done really well just off the back of being able to relate to people and um and and connect with people and help people see themselves as human beings and a reflection of that humanity then extended into the work that we would do together. So I want to say thank you guys so much. I did promise that we would do an episode every single week. Every Monday, I'd commit to making sure that we churn the content on our podcast. And and um, and I think we're we're you know very committed to that and very committed to ensuring that we're building this community and that we're serving this community. So as you guys know, um, just a wee bit over a week ago, I made a very soft announcement that I would be launching the VT Club 100, and this is a club of people who want to get a hundred percent out of their lives by giving a hundred percent of themselves into each and every aspect of their lives. It's about giving 100% of your life in terms of your your financial life, your personal relationship life, your physical health life, your spiritual life. Giving really 100% of yourself so that you can live your life fully. I think a lot of us really are constantly waiting for the next day. I've actually got an episode themed the next day. I've been doing some work on it. And when the time is right, we will publish it. But I think a lot of us are waiting for tomorrow. A lot of us think that the person we will be tomorrow is better than the person we are today. And as a consequence of this, we're waiting for that person to become manifest so that we can manifest the things we want. We don't actually realize that there is no tomorrow. The idea of tomorrow is an illusion, right? The, all there is is today. That's all there is. Yesterday is memory. Tomorrow is imagination. Today is real. Satguru talks a bit about this. He says that most suffering of humanity is not real suffering. Most of the things you suffer, if you think about it, in your life are experiences from your past, memory, or things you anticipate and fear could happen in future, and you build up anxiety, imagination. So then, you're, not, you're suffering the thing that isn't yet real. You're not actually suffering it. You're just imagining it and then suffering what would happen 
in the instance of imagining it. You're literally putting yourself in that space, remembering that moment, feeling those emotions, but that moment is gone. It's not there anymore. So, when the time is right, I'll, we'll publish that episode on the next day. This idea that being who you are today is all you really need to worry about, just today, and, and, and enjoy today. So, so what we're doing with Club 100 is exactly that. We really want to extend onto this idea of living in the moment and being 100% predicted and committed to this very moment that you're in. Life is nothing more than the present. That's what life is. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm in high energy because I just spent a weekend in Cape Town. So I'll tell you a bit about the week that I've had. I was in Joburg at the beginning of the week. Then I was in Rwanda in the middle of the week. Then flew out to Dubai um, towards the end of the week and flew back down into Cape Town by Friday and then spent my weekend in Cape Town. So I've had a whirlwind of travel over the past week or so, living 40,000 feet in the sky. And for those of you who don't know, we announced while I was in uh, Dubai that we are launching what will be Africa's fintech fund. And we've already got our first $50 million committed to fueling Series A, Series B, and hopefully some Series C fintech startups across the African continent. I genuinely, honestly believe in the revolution that technology and financial services are going to bring together. I spoke about it this, at the last episode. I think that the future of Africa exists in the intersection between technology and financial services. Financial services is how people better their lives. It's how they access new platforms. It's how they buy products, how they acquire assets. It's how they create wealth. It's how they, they pass down their wealth from one generation to another. And technology means we can proliferate previously difficult to proliferate products into people who couldn't afford them. You know, in the olden days, you needed a lawyer to do a will. Today, there are places online you can go to where you can download a will, have that will done and, and signed and, and secured in a vault without ever dealing with a physical human being. Their entire fintech business is built on this. In the olden days, you needed car cover for your insurance every single day. Today, there are insurance products in the world and even in Africa where you can buy the car cover only for driving that car on that day, and they take only the premium for the risk attached to the utility of the car, rather than the risk attached to the asset itself. Does that make sense? So if you think about it, the world of financial services and technology is intersecting. And I've pivoted most of our businesses and most of our funds towards this because I genuinely believe the future of Africa is in revolutionizing financial services using technology. I think banking is about to be disrupted. And if you look at what the good people of Standard Bank in South Africa are doing, this idea uh, they've come up with there of transforming a bank from being a bank to a platform that other banks and other financial products can be sold through is a game changer. Five years ago, if you needed a credit record or your credit score, you had to go to one of the bureaus. Today, if you're a standard banking client, you can actually access your credit record on, on the platform. And every time you log onto the app, you see it. Um, and you see the same thing too begin to happen with some of the other banks. So I think banking will change. I think insurance is about to fundamentally be shifted and change. And I can't wait to see. And I'm very excited to see how insurance is going to be fin to be to be shifted. Of course, insurance does have a series of different rules, embedded value, and um, you know things like capital adequacy. Those are a different set of things. And we have our own actuary research team headed by an amazing young man who is an actuary living in Botswana, living in South Africa from Botswana. Small Smart, smart young man. I met him doing a keynote in Botswana about five years ago. We built up a relationship and now we've built this little research desk where we're looking at opportunities and potential to disrupt insurance sector across the African continent, either by onboarding global technologies that already exist into the into the continent and or building our own but but within the, the remit of the law. But you, you know, you, you've got to have somebody who understands the technicalities. This young man in actuary really does. We're doing the same thing in crypto. I've got a young man uh, who I've been working with and mentoring for a long time who comes out of um, Ghana. Smart, smart, just smart. Ruthlessly 
ruthlessly smart this guy is. And in my mind, he's probably one of the top five crypto thinkers in the continent. And that's saying a lot because there are some really smart people in the world of Web3. He understands currencies. He understands DAOs. He under and he's participated in tokens and token raises. He's participated in DAOs. He's participated in NFTs and a whole host of things. And what we're doing there is we're, we're building a platform where we want to bring to market a, you know, some sort of investment vehicle that can early stage predict um, seed rather and 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 help accelerate some of the projects not only in Africa but globally but more importantly what we're passionate about is using decentralized technology to really bring um, and democratize access to complex financial products to people across the African continent you get a sense of what the stuff I'm working on right don't you think it's exciting I'm so excited there's so much to do and and you know the beautiful thing about the continent we're in is there are so many problems to fix that to any person who is committed and wants to do good work, you're going to find mega, mega issues that need to be addressed. Good. So that's the lead up for this week. That's the, the little opening. So go to vtclub100.com, hit vtclub100.com, send us your information. We're now at just a stitch. I want to say over 8,000 people have applied. Over 8,000 people. I went and had a look and my my team took the data and they put it on on one of these um, visualizer type of softwares. And I was having a look at where these people come from across the globe on like a heat map. We've got people from Singapore, from Australia, from Austria, from the United Kingdom, uh, of course, from my home country, uh, South Africa. We've got people from across the African continent. Africa was all over on that list. We've even got people from as far afield as Chile who've applied to become part of VT Club 100. So I'm very excited to uh, to begin to roll out the VT Club 100. As I've said before, it's a paid program. It won't be free. But I'm very excited to see how we can help people, the next generation of leaders, of disruptors, of iconoclasts, truly shift and change the world that we all live in. This week, though, I want to talk to you a bit about doppelganger. Doppelganger. Now, for those of you wondering, I'm not talking about doppelganger, the fashion label. Although that's a great fashion label. I have a couple of their shirts. They make a fantastic cut collar shirt. But doppelganger is actually a, a Latin uh, word, and it means alter ego. Doppelganger. So here's a question. Is Superman Clark Kent or is Clark Kent Superman? Which one is the real guy and which one is the guy he is pretending to be? Now, naturally, you want to say, well, you know, Superman is Superman. Clark Kent is the, the, the camouflage he has to wear to fit into our society, right? And that may be true. Personally, that's often how I feel like my life is going. That may be true. But the real question is, to understand that question, you'd have to actually understand, well, who is this person you and I know as Clark Kent? Who is this person we know as Superman? Superman was born in the fictional planet of Krypton. His birth name was Kel El. As a baby, his parents sent him to planet Earth in a small, cramped spaceship. Moments before his home planet of Krypton was destroyed in a natural cataclysm. In the movie, made I think around 2015, 2014, you see the beginning of the movie and Russell Crowe, who, pays, who plays Carl L's father, Superman's dad, fighting for uh, his son, who's a, who was the first um, in a long, long lineage of naturally born children. Because what had happened on the planet of Krypton was they had started manufacturing children based on genetic disposition. Basically, they chose the most superior genes and made children in a lab rather than allow people to naturally make children. And he decided, together with his wife, that they would make their own child. And then having done so, he coded into his child the history of their entire people, put him in a small little spaceship, and sent him home. But this, every story, does not go without its nemesis. And so General Zod, I think his name is, was the nemesis. He was the arch enemy here. And he was the guy who was, who was, who was genetically made to fight only for the preservation of his planet and his people, Krypton. 
and he will do whatever it takes to ensure that his planet, his species, and his people survive. And so at the beginning then of this movie, it sets up the story about who would become the enemy that Superman is going to have to face, this guy, General Zod. But when Superman, as a wee baby still, arrives on planet Earth, he arrives and is adopted by a farmer and his wife. The farmer's name is Jonathan and the wife's name is Martha. Their last name, Kent. They name him Clark Kent. So, when Jerry Siegel, Christopher Nolan, Joe Shutter, and Wayne Boring created the character of Superman, I wonder if they wanted us to think about Superman as the original, or of Clark Kent as the original man and form. Which of these is the real guy, Superman or Clark Kent? Well, I think to understand that, you need to understand a little bit about what the literature tells us about alter egos. So, an alter ego actually means the alternative self. It's, it, it's believed to be distinct from a person's normal or true original personality. Normal or true original personality. Finding one's alter ego will require finding one's other self and being one with a different personality. Psychologists and psychotherapists, by the way, have opined over this concept of the alter ego. Chereko coined the term as part of his philosophical construct in the first century Rome. That's how far back this work goes. But he described it as a second self. He'd called it a trusted friend. Freud, you know him, the famous psychologist Freud, famous for the Freudian slip of the tongue. Freud, throughout his career, would appeal to such instances of, as he called it, dual consciousness to support his thesis of the unconscious. He considered that we may most aptly describe them as cases of splitting of the mental activities into two groups and say that the same consciousness turns to one or the other of these groups alternately, dependent on a desired outcome. The alter ego. Each of us needs a partner. We're all looking for someone we can rely on in friendship, work, and life. Our partner in today's episode is Octafex, a reliable business associate in the Forex market. OctoFX is a global trading platform with 10 years of experience and more than 6 million trading accounts in 100 countries worldwide. Enjoy the lowest spreads in the industry, buy and sell for the price you see with the fastest execution, and take part in regular promos. Join the community of like-minded entrepreneurs by watching the webinars, reading the market analysis, and mastering a free Forex basic course. Check the caption to learn more and find your bonuses for more profitable trading in the description. There are some of you, as we speak, whose entire life has been built across on the platform, the foundation of who you are expected to be. You've been the warrior princess in your family that has cared for your elders. You've been the go-to son that has cared for your mom, your dad, and your uncles. You've been the siblings that has been providing for the rest of your family. In your own business, you're the one everybody looks to when they have no place to go. At your place of work, you're the one constantly providing new ideas, new thinking, and new solutions. In every environment that you're in, you are Superwoman. You are Superman. But is Superman allowed a moment of weakness? Is Superman allowed to be Clark Kent? You know, in the story of Superman, one of the things about Superman is he's the man of steel. That is to say, he's indestructible. And so they fire bullets at him and he just stands there. They shoot rockets at him and he just stands there. He can rocket himself 30, 40,000 feet into the sky. He can fly. He can move from one part of the world to another at lightning speed, faster even, it is said, 
than the comical character Flash. He can see through walls. He can burn through objects using his laser beam eyes. He's got X-ray vision. This guy, this girl, is Superman. He's Superwoman. But when his father, Jonathan Kent, dies, he's sad. This is to say he can be physically indestructible, but that doesn't mean he doesn't have emotional scars. It doesn't mean he doesn't feel. It certainly doesn't mean he doesn't hurt. And as the old Chinese expression goes, if you can hurt it, you can kill it. Anything that has the ability to feel pain has the propensity to be destroyed. So the emotional harm we see Superman suffer when Jonathan Kent dies kind of arcs up into this crescendo of what happens when he gets shot by the Krypton bullet and almost dies. Because even though he is Superman, he's not without weakness. So, today, Superman and Superwoman's listening to this conversation. First, I want to say that I see you. You're listening to this right now. You're probably on your way to picking up the kids from school and taking them home. Your phone has been buzzing back to back with phone calls, either from the office or it being kind of the entrance at the end of the first week of February. Debt collectors and bill collectors because there's some debit orders you were not able to make. Your phone is buzzing right now with people from all across the world calling you for new business opportunities. It's buzzing right now with friends of yours who are calling you, telling you about the problems they have in their lives. The kids are at the back, jumping up and down and screaming, Mommy, 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 get me some McDonald's. Dad, turn left here. When you get home, you may or may not have a good relationship with your partner. And so you're either coming into a warm home with a smell of baked bread. Yeah, and uh, chicken curry. Or you're coming home into a cold reception, steely floors, and unheated fragrance. The ambiance is so cool, it may as well be black. So, who do you cry to? Who do you call? Where does Superman go? when Superman doesn't feel indestructible? Where does Superman go when Superman doesn't have the answers? Where does Superman go when Superman has doubt about his or her own self, his or her own capabilities, their talents? Where does Superman go when Superman is constantly being attacked, told he's worthless, an imposter, a liar? Where does Superman go? One of the reasons I really admire Kanye West, and say whatever you will about Ye, is his incredible ability to bounce back no matter what people say about him. There are some of you who will never know what it means to have 10,000 people speak vitriol upon your name in a 24-hour cycle. And I pray that you never experience it. But for the few of us, those of us chosen to brave those elements, I wonder where does Kanye West go when people question him or his intellect or his mental health or his decisions or his abilities or his talents? I wonder where does Kanye West go when people tell him he thinks too much of himself or is the way people like to say it, who do you think you are? I wonder where does Kanye West go? Now, one of the things you will notice about men and women who have shaped the history of the world, the people I love studying, who've literally bended the arc of history towards their particular proclivity and values, is almost all of those people, at some point or another, had a Superman complex and an alter ego. Most of us forget, particularly in today's world of social media and avatars and digital personalities, that there is somebody else on the other end of the avatar. 
There's somebody else on the other end of that at sign. There's somebody else on the other end of that profile. We forget these things. And so we talk about people almost as if we're talking about a, robo a robotic entity that doesn't have any feelings or emotions. Most of us forget that the person we are gossiping about has feelings and emotions too. Most of us forget the person we are ridiculing in our WhatsApp groups and making fun about is doing the best they can just to survive. They're waking up every day looking for a reason to stay alive. This is why the incidences of mental health have become so spiked in recent times. I don't think it's ironic, and I certainly don't think it's by coincidence, that we've had a sharp rise in incidences of mental health illnesses that is probably aligned, in my mind, to the sharp rise in connectivity, in the internet, in mobile telephony, because we're more connected as human beings. So here's a question. How can we be so connected and yet so foreign to each other? How can we be so connected and yet so alien to one another? How can we share in WhatsApp groups and yet we don't know the suffering of somebody else in that very group? How can we talk to people in Telegram channels and not know who's there? Right now, we're making phone calls to friends, and the first thing you ask is, how are you? But I think 99% of us ask that question really out of courtesy. I don't think we mean it. And I certainly don't think we ask the question, how are you? Actually really wanting to hear how that person is. So for those of you, who are the Superman and Superwomen, I see you. For those of you who know a Superman and Superwoman, here is a challenge for you right now. Take your phone and send them the following message. I know that you have been strong, and I know that you have the strength to carry any burden in your life. But I just want you to know that if you ever need a shoulder to cry on, an ear to listen without judgment, if you ever need a heart to pour yours into without any sort of retrieve, I am here for you. Because you know the hardest part about being Superman? Superman is not allowed to cry. Superwoman is not allowed to show weakness. They have to have it figured out all the time. <laughs> It's a tough one, isn't it? So there are all of us, I think, in our lives who have these alter egos. We all have these people we construct. Some, not quite as distinct as Superman, but we all do. You wake up in the morning and you put on makeup. Why? It's your alter ego. There is a character you're about to play. You wake up in the morning and you put on a suit. Why? It's your alter ego. There is a character you're about to play. Somebody the world expects you to be. Or you, somebody you have told the world you Ah, so how do you manage an alter ego as I close this podcast? First, have some fun with it. Have some fun with it. Take the mickey out of yourself sometimes. Don't be so, or as the Joker says, why so serious? Don't be so serious. Just allow yourself a little bit of humor, a little bit of joke. Allow things not to work out. And that's okay. It's absolutely and perfectly okay to go, you know what? I tried and it didn't work. I, I, I did the best I could given what I had at the time. Guess what? I'm human. Life happens. Next. Losing makes you neither less or more than what you were. Win winning makes you neither better or worse than who you are. Neither winning nor losing are determinants of your character as a person, but rather outcomes of a result outcomes or a result based on how you approach a particular process. That's all winning and losing are. Hmm. You know, one of the greatest alter egos that comes to mind is the late David Bowie in his Ziggy Stardust. Now that, of course, it's over-exaggerated, but it's the best way for people to understand and put into perspective. Oftentimes, we give ourselves a name that reflects the character we are playing. Superman. 
think about some of the off the name or off the wall names that your alternate self could be Superman, Catwoman, Flash. And what you notice is all of these are things we want the world to believe about ourselves that may or may not be true, but things we desperately want to believe about ourselves too. So, friends, that's the podcast for this week. To superwomen and superwomen out there, I salute you and I see you. And to those of you who have those people in your life, I challenge you to honor them just this week, to let them know they don't have to put up the facade every day. And that, my friends, is the VT Podcast this week. Sayonara. This podcast was proudly brought to you by My Growth Fund in partnership with Sound & Sounds Media. To have your podcast recorded, send an email to info at soundandsounds.co.za. That's I-N-F-O at S-O-U-N-D-A-N-D-S-O-U-N-D-S dot C-O dot Z-A.